What's going on, crew? It's time for the Binge Boys podcast. Happy Tuesday or happy Labor Day to you, Matt and Tanner. What's up, boys? How we doing? I'm oh, great. <laughs> full flavor. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're firing on all cylinders tonight. We've got uh we've got a good one today, guys. Oh yeah. Oh boy. We're ready. We're ready to uh ready to crank this thing out. <laughs> Not the right words again. Um everybody, before we get into our loaded epi today, I'm just gonna get right to it. Uh if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. If you're a longtime listener, welcome back. If this is your first time, Again, welcome. And the premise is that each week, my co-host and I break down the hottest in TV and movies. Every Thursday, we have a bonus episode of the show entitled The Run-Through. On those episodes, I'm joined by Tanner and Matt or Megan and Emily or anyone who wants to give their takes and dive in on a different movie or TV series. Break it down element by element and give an in-depth review. Oh, you know it. Things first. Follow I'm us on realist. Instagram at Binge Boys Podcast. <laughs> Stop it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting for one of you to give me one of that. <laughs> give me that. And I'm disappointed that it, it was you, Tanner. I think you knew it was going to be my. I know. Stupid, I know. Yeah. I knew it was going to be you. <laughs> um, that's where you that's where we post our announcements, our top five lists, our reviews and more. Next thing, go on iTunes. Make sure you've left that five star rating and a short review. It helps us out a lot believe it or not, and it helps us grow the show. It's 2021, everybody, and we are all on our hotness and fitness journey, and one of the biggest aspects of that lifestyle is eating healthy and meal prepping. Most people have no idea where to start and are overwhelmed by options, and they don't know what meals suit them best for their goals they want to achieve. Luckily, our friends at Prepped and Ready have the solution. They deliver high-quality, fresh meals with health and fitness in mind with a variety of healthy and low-calorie but delicious meals. They cater to anyone's personal needs. If you live in the greater Atlanta area and you're interested in meal prep made simple, you can go to PreppedReadyMeals.com and use code BINGE15 at checkout for 15% off your first-time order. PreppedReadyMeals.com for 15% off your first-time order. Use code BINGE15. Tanner, e, what did you uh, what you do this weekend? Well, I didn't work. It was incredible. A I Labor went, Day uh, weekend of all weekends. I, I, know. <laughs> I went to uh, Illinois and saw Tess. Haven't seen her in a long time. My sister and uh, we hung out with the family. My dad's side of the family. We saw um, went to Nashville actually right at the beginning and saw our cousins Shelby and Chris in their new apartment. Congratulations to them and. Uh, yeah, it was just a great time, and I spent today in the car and just got home like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> How about it? I, <laughs> How about it? Just How about, in uh, time. Matt, what did you get into this Labor Day weekend? Oh, it was good. Went back to Illinois as well. Actually, I went to the north sub or the western suburbs of Chicago for my dad's birthday. Happy Happy 62 JPP. Love Woo! to love to see that. Yeah. I uh, didn't do anything too crazy. Saw my sister. She's a homeowner as well now, so I got to see that. Um, and then we came back last night and today just kind of had a movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a major motion picture? A <laughs> major motion picture. Just went for a bike ride, played a board oh. game, fixed the shower after I broke it, trying to wow. rush out in time to see a movie. Uh, <laughs> Major motion picture major alert. Major motion picture alert, yeah. This is like an IMAX motion picture, major picture. <laughs> Tried to get some Popeyes. Turns out they closed at six. So oh. big big anti-shouts to them for that. So Mega tough scene there. <laughs> yeah, I got some really slow-ass Qdoba, but I'm, I'm making it through. Sometimes you got to settle for the Qdoba. Yeah, uh, yeah. What about you, Logan? So how, the, how are the three days treating you? Wow. Um, who knew that we were all going to get off a travel weekend? <laughs> we uh, we did the same. And Saturday morning, um, we woke up and drove to Nashville as well, kind of a day after Tanner and his yeah. folks ran through the town. Um, 
Catherine's parents are are uh, they live in Nashville or Catherine's from Nashville. Big shouts to N Town. Not sure if that's what they call it. Don't think it is. Um, she's probably shaking her head in the other room. But uh, visited her folks, kind of checked on them, and then, like Tanner said, we kind of bumped into our cousin Shelby and her boyfriend Chris and Aunt Sherry and Uncle Tom as well, and kind of mobbed with them for the evening, and then. Got up the next day, drove back to Georgia, and I worked last night. Nice. Not- Do you mind it, actually if I hit you with some uh, nicknames for Nashville, according to Google? Yes, oh, let's, no. let's hear them, please. The Protestant Vatican. What? <laughs> Smashville. That's kind of that's that's. Right I have there. I have I have indeed heard it called Smashville by several. But then my favorite, the buckle of the Bible Belt. Oh geez, I need Catherine. <laughs> I think she's doing makeup or hair or something in the other room. Catherine, if you can hear me, can you please come out here and confirm uh, any of these nicknames for Nashville? <laughs> I doubt that uh, she's going to open the door. In fact, she's probably about to text me and be like, no. <laughs> maybe she'll do that when she's listening back instead of live. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe she's not into it right now. But um, either way, um, yeah. And then we just hung out today, kind of didn't do anything. We watched a show that we'll talk about later in the uh, what have we been binging uh, segment. Um, But other than that, kind of just hung out after this episode recording. We're going to make some brownies, have a little date night situation. Um, (laughs) We're excited. What did I say? You just make some more kind of brownies. Just some regular brownies. (laughs) There's no uh, contraband going in those brownies. Wink. <laughs> we're just uh we're, they're just normal brownies everybody <laughs> let's not start well, that. logan and Catherine make weed brownies <laughs> you're the one saying it let's, let's not start that <laughs> if you, they sell them uh, for 10 bucks a pop <laughs> just notice that the cup i'm drinking water out of out of right now says let's get naughty but naughty is spelled n-a-u-t-i oh with a with a little uh whatever, whatever you call that I, I don't know what that's oh, called. Captain the wheel. Yeah. The wheel? Yeah. The steering wheel. Yeah, the steering uh, wheel. Not sure if uh, pirates called it anything special. Just Probably the steering did. wheel. I man the steering wheel. I yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they say something the else. But we're not here to debate that. The mast, maybe? Maybe. No, the mast Tanner, is like you're a Pirates boat. of the Caribbean fan. What would the they helm. call it? It's the, the helm. helm, yeah. Man yeah. the helm. Man the helm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Arr. So, God. like we stated, we have a loaded epi, so let's just dive balls deep in. And yes, we're doing it. Oh. Um, we've got, uh, well, before we get into it, I kind of wanted to say, I, at the top, I usually say that we dive into movies and TV and video games and music and all, and all of those fun things, but I've paid close attention to the analytics and to the numbers and to our IG following. And I think that TV and movies is what the binge boys are good at. So what we're going to do going forward, (laughs) excuse me, (laughs) we're going to talk about certified lover boy today, Drake's new album, but going forward, we will not be reviewing, uh, major album releases or video game releases oh. um, unless we're going to talk about like what we've been binging lately. If we've been okay. playing a big release for video games, we'll talk about it. If we've been listening to a big album that came out, we'll talk about it there. But the binge boys peeps are mainly in it for the movies and the TV. So we'll, we're going to focus more in on that. And I like it. I mean, it's not like we don't already, but right. just going to cut out that, you know, little extra so, uh, you know, trim the yeah. fat a little bit and we'll see where it goes. Let's do it. I like it. Well, Most, uh, mostly because, you know, a lot of these albums that come out, I, Drake. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, before Spoiler. we get to that, sorry. there's a few, a few bullet points we wanted to hit for the headlines today. Most of them are very, very quick. So I'm just going to kind of run through them. Um, number one, the other day, The Rock took to Instagram to formally announce that Jungle Cruise is getting a sequel. 
Oh. Um, no details on when. He just said, you know, we broke records during the pandemic box office. So we are going to uh, make Jungle Cruise a franchise and uh, do the damn thing. So they are doing uh, a sequel. And the original director is back to direct, and the writers are coming back to write again. So Jungle Cruise 2 will come in the next few years. Are we hype about it? No, uh, I mean... Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. I was going to say, I still haven't seen it. Where, where does it like take place? I can't remember what I, when, we, when you guys talked about. It's like a fictional country or like a real place? Um, it I takes place in, in actual South... Wait. Tanner, where does this movie take place? South uh, America, right? I th- or Africa? So, Isn't it Africa? It's not a uh, not America. Uh, it's set in the Amazon River. So there, there you go. Thank you. Which so is like, Africa, oh yeah, that makes sense. I, think, uh, right? I I would like to think that uh, in this announcement video, I didn't watch it, but he's like, finally, the Rock <laughs> has returned to the Amazon. <laughs> He did typical rock, uh, rock announcement where he's dripping, bu- dripping yeah. sweat in the uh, in the gym, and he's like, you know, hey holding guys. the phone all the way up here, and he's uh, like, uh. "We're so excited, our amazing team. We're gonna get a sequel for Jungle Cruise." And then he ends the video by reaching into the fridge and cracking an energy drink and the Zoa, the Zoa uh, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So he's saying, "I wish this was a Terramana tequila." Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so that's news on Jungle Cruise Two. We'll see that probably in the next three years. I assume they'll probably crank out a sequel pretty quick to that if they if they can get the rock on the schedule there. Um, but uh, in the meantime, while we wait for Jungle Cruise Two, we can binge you season three which was formally announced last week with a trailer and the season three release date of October 15th. Okay. So, wow. Matt, have you seen you? I have not seen you. I have seen Logan. I have seen Tanner, but I have not seen (laughs) you. (laughs) Tanner, did you watch you? I did. The first two seasons. Pretty good. Did you, did you like it? Yeah. It's an interesting, it's a terrifying concept actually, but, yeah, I'll watch it. I'll watch season three. Yeah, it's, it's sure. a fun thriller. So I'm down for season three. I, I hope they maybe cap it at season three. I don't know what more yeah. they can do with it. Really. I, I know. Yeah. I'm a little... Otherwise, it kind of feels like they're stretching it a little too thin. But, you know, we'll see. I agree with that because it okay. kind of seemed like it was. Yeah. Anyways, can't say anything else. Yeah, there's Spoilers. there's not much to say, really. I mean, we're, we're getting a sequel and uh, or I mean, a, a new season. A and, sequel, sequel. You know, that's about it. Boom. So. Um, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for you season three to come out, we can mourn, uh, the loss of top gun to, uh, mission impossible seven jackass forever and ghostbusters afterlife paramount is pushed more movies back in fear of the <sighs> Delta variant of, uh, COVID-19. However, I think they're going to eat their words when they notice the, uh, box office, success um of of shang chi but we'll of, of, and we'll talk about that later but they moved all three of those movies back to uh 2022 mission impossible 7 was supposed to is coming oh wow sorry mission impossible 7 was supposed to be memorial day weekend next year however they pushed it all the way back to september 30th 2022 Top Gun 2 has been moved back to that Memorial Day slot. And God, uh, so Jackass far. Forever is moving from October 2nd to February 4th, 2022. And then it doesn't mention Ghostbusters date, but I think Ghostbusters moved back from, I think, October all the way to... It was supposed to come out over November 11th, but it got pushed back to, I think... Oh, just a week, just one week. So, which is an odd move, but yeah. <laughs> oh, well, um, that's probably going to change again. November, so maybe, maybe they did that because they didn't. Yeah, have a, coming out November nineteenth now. So, yep, more movie delays, <laughs> but um, Damn. you know that 
can be forgiven because I think, like I just said, due to Shang-Chi's success this weekend, Sony moved Venom again. Uh, today, <laughs> they announced that Venom is coming out two weeks earlier on October 1st instead of like October 19th or October 15th 1st. or something. Oh, yes. So, Venom 2, hopefully, finally, its fifth release date uh, is October 1st of this year. Um, I think, yeah, Disney reported a bigger than anticipated opening for Shang-Chi. The movie brought in over $140 million worldwide oh. for this weekend. And Sony was like, looks like people are going to the movie. So we're going to move Venom up two weeks. Good. October 1st is when we get it. Uh there you go. I'm hype as hell. I just saw the first Venom again last night. And yeah. I'm so excited. It's going to be said, good. It should be good. Logan, when you were talking about it, you said the word finally like three times. And all I have in my head is finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> Venom has returned to theaters. <laughs> I feel like when the credits start rolling at the beginning, people are just going to applaud because it's been like two years in the, in the waiting yeah, for this I movie know. to come out. Well. Well. That's right. headlines, and we can move right into uh, Certified Lover Boy, Drake's sure. sixth studio album, which seems not right, but uh, but I guess he's put out a bunch of mixtapes in between all these studio releases. Yeah, um, like uh, the one with his dad on the cover, More Love, that's technically like a playlist or something. I'm like, this is just stupid. Come on. Why don't we album. just call them all albums? Because that's right, what they yeah. all are. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, Certified Lover Boy, sixth studio album by Drake, released on September third, two thousand and twenty one through Ovo Sound and Republic Records, featuring guest appearances by uh and not only uh Kid Cuddy, Lil Wayne, Ty Dolla Sign, Rick Ross, Twenty One Savage, Project Pat, Lil Baby, Jay Z, Travis Scott, Future Young Thug, and the rest. Mm, the album was initially set for release January 2021, but was delayed multiple times all the way back until now. Matt, yeah. what did you think of Certified Lover Boy? Uh, overall, I thought it was pretty solid, but first things first, we got to talk album art. This is just terrible. <laughs> I hate it so much. Yeah, all time. Uh, you know, if every single song on the album was a banger, I still probably would have given it a four out of five because of the the album art. It's yeah. I, I usually don't factor that into my decision, but come on, man, what? Right, it's it's just bad, but but overall, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, pretty long, about an hour and a half, like runtime, and I didn't think there was too much uh, filler. I, granted, I only listened once, so maybe I'd be a little bit more uh quick with the skip button um upon a second listen but a lot of the features show up i thought i can't think of a track that drake and jay-z have together and i like them both a lot so i thought that that was um a pretty good one um and that one is love all um and then fair trade him and travis scott always seem to bring it uh, and then you only live twice the one with lil wayne and rick ross that was probably my favorite on the album those are him with each of those people always um, does really well. But yeah, overall, I thought it was just solid Drake track, talking a lot about the kid. Um, that's kind of the, his big thing in the last little bit. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, overall, I thought it was just a pretty solid album. A lot of, a lot of good tracks. What about you, Logan? Um, I, I, I found myself enjoying it um, as well. Um, I'm not a huge Drake stan. Yeah. I don't jump up and down about Drake releases much anymore. But I did enjoy myself a lot more um, in this album. If, if we're going to point fingers and, and make comparisons, I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Donda. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I don't think they're necessarily, excuse me again, I don't think they're necessarily in the same category of music. Yeah. Um, but uh, I really liked um the jay-z song too i think jay-z did a real good job i don't think i i don't think there's a jay-z and drake song out there so that was kind of a really cool feature maybe fact check that i'm not sure didn't they didn't they beef for a while in that why 
I'm not probably sure. have all beefed. <laughs> I feel like all the beef is just for publicity, honestly. I'm not even sure that the Drake and Kanye beef was real because no one's talking about it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm convinced that they both used each other to to get hype for each other's albums. Which is totally They're probably possible. both high-fiving and, and cheersing champagne like behind the scenes. <laughs> These dipshits. <laughs> yeah, for real. The fans will listen to anything. I really liked the song Way Too Sexy. Which no, seems to be okay. one that's being no, I'm memed a lot. On that one, I'm throwing that song stinks. Really, you don't <laughs> like it? It's just too cheesy. I just don't need to hear uh, whoever it is, him, Future, and um, and Thug. Thug, Young Thug. They just I count. I actually counted. They say the word sexy like 55 times. <laughs> I I said it to my friends. I was like, you know, the song's like fine. Like, I think the B is really good. Like, everyone brings their A game, but they just say the word sexy too much. I think, <laughs> I do think Young Thug is kind of forced. I think it would have been fine if it was just Drake and Future. Yeah. Because um, Young Thug kind of comes in at the end and is just like, has like a 30 second, maybe 15 second verse. And then he goes away. And I'm like, well, okay, that was. That was kind of wasted, but I was young. Though. Sorry, only fifty-one. Only fifty-one <laughs> times is the word said not in the like original beat. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, I like the same the song that you mentioned as well. The only you only live twice, or you only live once on Wikipedia. It says you only live twice, but I don't think that's the title. No, it is. That's, oh, it is. Word. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was a nice throwback to have Lil Wayne on You Only Live Twice, considering he was the one that was featured on the YOLO song way back yeah, when. On the motto. On the motto. That's it. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty solid, man. I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of these that I keep on rotation. I really liked Knife Talk with 21 Savage and Project Pat. That was really good, too. Yeah. Uh, a lot of no good friends production in- on this one. The production was really good. I feel like um, pretty and pretty consistent throughout. I feel like a lot of times with um, Drake, it can be really different. Like a lot of like Caribbean stuff in one song and then just a solid like trap beat in the other. But this one, there was some like different stuff between the songs, but overall it was really cohesive. Yeah. Only thing that really kind of bugged me was a few of the songs didn't land. And then it was, it was kind of long considering the fact that Kanye's album was 27 songs long and it was two hours and Drake's was six songs shorter, but it was still an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, hey, uh, what's going it. on here? Yeah. But, but Tanner, what'd you, uh, what'd you think? I know you're not the biggest Drake guy. Uh-uh. I listened <laughs> only for the features and I mean, the features were good, but I just, uh, I probably won't be listening to any of this ever again. Most likely, unless it comes on like, a, like a playlist or something then i'll probably head you know be like oh okay this wasn't that bad but like i just have such a bad closed mind for drake that's the Why? problem where did I that just, come from because you you and both of my siblings i just can't have I just, always just never could care about drake i did a little as a kid but then i just got so i don't know what it is honestly i guess he just got honestly you go through high school and stuff and like the mainstream guys everybody you know, and it, I guess I kind of listened to everybody else a little bit, and now I don't like them. But it was all right. I gave it. I'll give it a. I'll give it a three out of five. I didn't write it down, but it's all right. <laughs> Knife Talk was good. Twenty One Savage is good. A lot of the features were great. Like the um, the Future and Young Thug song was all right. Um, it's I, I'm actually enjoying the memes more. <laughs> you guys seeing the memes of like him him walking into the studio like he's wearing like a, a wife beater for like one of the um one of like the hard rap songs and then he's wearing like a dress for the girls want girls song. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, it's actually hilarious. All the I don't like that. I don't care for that song. Song. That's, a, that's a fun no. concept of a song. A weird song. It, it is weird. Baby was in it though, and that's why I listened to it. And I was like, what the? F-? I think that. <laughs> A lot of the features are like a safe bet too. Like, yeah, yeah. All these features usually do something pretty good. Like, it's it's almost kind of not boring, but like seeing the same names on every album. Like Travis Scott feature, of course, because Travis Scott always kills it. Like, yeah, it was cool seeing Jay Z and Kid Cudi. That like, I don't cool. think Kid Cudi has anything with Drake, to my knowledge. So I that was why, pretty nice. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not the biggest Cuddy fan, so I don't know if he's done stuff with Drake in the past. Same, but I didn't mind 
both of those features. Those were cool. Yeah, I can't. I feel like they have. I'm not like coming to some, but yeah, I thought they definitely both brought it for sure. Yeah. So I mean, I I dug it. I gave it a four out of five. I kind of want to go back on my Donda score. I gave it a four out of five too. I probably go back and give it a three. I haven't really listened to any of it and the stuff that has come on in the car. I've skipped. Yeah. I don't know. I just. Maybe I was more excited about it in the moment, but this is sure. probably if 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 I'm gonna make comparisons, I enjoyed this more. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it was more my style of music, anyways. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I mean, I put it on in the car ride on the way here or on the way to Illinois. Yeah, and then I was just like, I kind of fell asleep halfway through. But I mean, a few of them, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Then uh, I couldn't tell you which ones they were. <laughs> what about you, Matt? The the Donda certified lover boy battle. People have putting them against each other. What do you think? This one. Yeah, I feel like more of just kind of like the production and lyrics from Donda have stuck with me a little bit more, even though that's the you know was released longer ago. Even though it's just like a week at this point. Um, and then I listened to Certified Lover Boy when it dropped on Friday, and I'm having a hard time like recalling like specific lines or or beats. So I'm think I'm leaning more towards Donda, like in that respect. Um, I, I dig think, it. Yeah. I dig it. I yeah, Drake's definitely sort of just more poppy and like more fun to listen to. But I feel like um, Kanye like sticks with me a little bit more. So just personal preference. Yeah, I I dig it. Well, guys, that was uh, that was certified lover boy. Uh, also Terrible just name as well. Name yes, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just a weird overall name. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, that's it is what it is. I guess it is what it is, and it is what it is, and it is what it is. It sure is. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> we can wow. move. We can move right along to. Uh, little uh show called what if Uh, if. which uh i i don't know last week we said that or at least i said that i i really enjoyed the uh the episode and thought it was the best one but this one might be the best one i'm I'm not sure it it was i agree i think this is the worst one the worst one the worst one really it what it just felt like a discarded script for a Doctor Strange movie. Ooh, interesting. Like what like I didn't really see them. This just felt like kind of a plot line that they tried to make into the Doctor Strange sequel. And they're like, uh, eh, I don't know, there's not quite enough there. The elements like we can't really get to it to where we want. So we'll just need to, you know, change around some pieces and we can retool it for this because it, I don't know, it just felt like really like disjointed. Like it didn't seem like it fit in with the others that kind of picked and choose different pieces from the MCU and sort of all brought them together. Where this was pretty much just focused on Doctor Strange, which is fine for um, something. But when I was sort of expecting other elements and other characters to be brought in, it was just kind of disappointing for me. Interesting. Okay. I see that. A lot of uh, a lot of stuff about this. I've seen a lot of speculation saying that the evil Doctor Strange that we see in this uh, that we see in this episode is going to be making a live action appearance in Doctor Strange Two oh, in the multiverse. Fudge. So um, I think this is their way of kind of. I have heard them in the past say that what if is canon. So whatever happens in what if is going to be in the, I, I don't know how or I feel about happened. that. I, I, I well, enjoy, well, well, let I me mean, say this. No, go ahead, Tanner. Technically, like, I mean, it's all different universes. So, I mean, it has happened. So like everything, anything that ha- can happen is, is canon at this point, given the events of the end of Loki, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. True, yeah. They can do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> I, I will say that I did turn it off halfway through the first upon the first viewing because I was like, I am I forget what was going on, but I was like, I am completely uninterested in this right now. I think I might have been eating dinner or, or doing something, but I remember 
saying to myself or maybe even said it out loud like i paused it and said like i am not interested in this right now and i turned it off and then the next morning i woke up and watched the rest and i was like that was cool but a lot of it i i guess the whole point of it was so that he could save christine or whatever yeah, yeah. and like i don't know yeah. I, I still maybe think that the third episode is the best, but this I was an this interesting one. concept because Matt's right. It did kind of come out of left field because the other episodes have dealt with like everybody, uh, everybody. And this was just kind of like, boom, Dr. Strange. This is a Dr. Strange episode. And it was like, oh, oh okay. But it also shows how, how, how significant he really is. He could end the whole entire world if he wanted to right now. Doctor Which Strange. Is, yeah, he's just so powerful. I mean, I love. I think this was the best one, personally. Really? Yep. Because you had I a mean, lot of fun with it. I was on an emotional roller coaster, and I love Doctor Strange. So, like, seeing, I mean, it was sad at the end. Like, shit. And it was so cool because he talked to the Watcher. Yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. Like, that, that means was, he's that powerful. You know what I mean? That was cool, considering like a few episodes ago, didn't we say like we hope we he's not just restricted to be like the narrator? Yeah, but like. Turns out, well, it's almost like they broke the fourth wall, but didn't at the same time. Right. They broke an internal fourth wall, but not like (laughs) fully like looking. He looked to a audience or an audience, but not like the audience, you know, capital T, capital A. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what. I mean, this week's they announced today that we're getting zombie episode on on Wednesday. So, so we're Man, getting sure feels that. great to be back in 2008 <laughs> with zombie hype. Just when zombies <laughs> is just like the coolest thing. I know it. Yeah, true. So zombies, I guess though. we'll have to see. I don't know. We'll see if we get other episodes that deal with specific characters like that. But otherwise, um, Tanner, it's your favorite so far. I think they're just going bet In my opinion, they went from, eh, eh, oh, ah, you know, like they're just going up like, on a, on an elevator, right? Or visual representation is yeah. great for the, pop, the audio yeah, medium. <laughs> They're just gonna hear me go, uh, 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 uh. oh, they'll get it. <laughs> they'll get it. They'll, sure. It's an ascension. They're getting better and better. Yeah, okay. Ascension. Zombies ascension. Oh. oh, throw back to Black Ops like <laughs> two or Black Ops one. It was Black Ops one. There was a zombie map oh, no. called Ascension with monkeys on it that came and stole your perks. Or no, that's right. Perk, the perk I remember that. Yeah, that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Big shout out to the <laughs> perk monkeys. That's, isn't that what they used to call you in high school, Tanner? The perk, perk monkey? <laughs> oh, no. C, right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we got to talk about... Um, <laughs> We got to talk about Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Can't put it off anymore. Said we got to talk. And I was like, "Huh?" With your perk, <laughs> with my <kid>. perk problem. <laughs> Before Anyways. we get into it, a little information about the movie. Shang Chi is the master of unarmed weaponry based kung fu. He is forced to confront his past by being drawn into the Ten Rings organization led by his father. Daddy. The movie is. Two hours and 12 minutes, PG-13, of course. It came out this previous weekend. And it stars Simu Liu, Aquafina, Tony Leung, and many, many more. Um, I will straight up say that this is the best MCU solo film we've seen in a long time. Bad. Uh, yes. In my opinion, I... Yeah, I, I really freaking loved this movie, and I think we all did. Matt, what, what, what did you? What's your one line or review there? I think it was they basically saw everything that worked with Black Panther and said, "Let's do that again." Yeah, and it was tight. <laughs> yep, my one Tanner. line is "Holy shit!" <laughs> That's it. Yep. Holy shit! That was oh, so, you were sitting next to me the whole time, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Every two seconds. Holy shit. I probably got annoying, didn't I, Logan? <laughs> no, I think there was a few moments where we looked at each other in the movie. And it, there was a moment at the be- very beginning, like maybe 15, 20 minutes in, where you looked over at me and you said, I don't know about this. And I was yeah. like, I'm not sure either. Because like a few of the comedy lines didn't land for me at the very beginning. 
And I was like, oh, I don't know if the humor is going to work. But as the movie got on, I ate my words, dude. Oh, it my was, God. It was funny as hell. It was action packed. The CGI was gorgeous. It was really the good. Fighting. The fighting. Yeah. Oh, the my CG God. It wasn't only just like high quality, but it was like stylized. I feel like it was in a different. Yeah. Like they were trying to do different things than what like everything else does in the, the MCU. Because it can sometimes all look the same, but this was very unique big week for uh grotesque monsters in the mcu just oh my there's God. having a minute between this that and the doctor incredible. strange episode <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure dude like and i was also surprised and i think i said this to tanner when we were seeing the movie that there was a lot of stuff they did not show in the trailer yeah like this freaking dragon fights and holy yeah. shit i had no idea that was coming but it worked usually when that stuff comes up and i'm like i'm, I'm, I'm like oh this is dumb you know but that was fucking awesome. It worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the sort of, I thought I was telling this to my girlfriend on the way home. I feel like MCU movies have an issue, especially after um, Infinity War and Endgame have a problem with like setting the stakes like appropriately high that it's like you get invested, but not, you know, world ending again because, you know, again, <laughs> um, but I felt like this was appropriately weighty and that like there's this big bad that like if he escapes like that's a big deal and everyone's gonna die but it was pretty contained to just like that village and I just thought that that was like a, a unique way to get around the problem that I think a lot of movies going forward need to you know pay attention to and see how, how that does it yep I agree yeah it, it makes me really really happy man like I I think Tanner said before we went into it that he said he saw an interview with Kevin Feige or something, and Kevin said like this guy's gonna be a yep. lot of people's new favorite like Avenger. Mm -hmm. Like he's yeah. got my freaking support, and I one hundred percent agree. Like he's super likable, very As a person too. Like I, I I just loved him, man. I me too. He, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matt, if you were to critique something about the movie, I know we all gave it a five out of five right, across right. the board, but if you were to critique something, what would it be? Well, first off, I'm offended. You go to me for the critique. It's like I'm the guy who's always the I'm the wet blanket of it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to, I like, I don't know. Maybe I'm still like buzzing off of it, but um i can't think of anything that was bothering me um like you were saying maybe the earl the beginning was a little bit slow sort of figuring out just the dynamic between him and aquafina um was a little bit tricky i feel like um i didn't i thought i was just getting aquafina from uh crazy rich agents but she was a little bit different and was a little bit more um easy to relate to um, than I feel like she can be a lot of time. So yeah, I thought she was good. So yeah, you look for critiques and I'm, I'm just, I'm just buzzing too much, man. Well, it was almost, it was almost a trick question because I don't really know if I have any either. I don't either. I, I just want to rewatch that. Bus his scene. dad was mm -hmm. a, a good villain. He um, was. It's intimidating. Very, yeah. very good villain. Cause at one point, like when you find, like when we finally meet him in the movie, we're like, Oh, is, is he that bad or is he just or is he just hell bent on rescuing his wife like he's not necessarily a guy with an evil plan right no. like he's he just had a goal and he was blinded by almost like the mermaid thing and like that wasn't Art. what is it the odyssey they say if the mermaids get yeah, you yeah. they'll they'll make you fall in love with them and they'll lure you into the water or whatever that that's mm -hmm. essentially what this was right yeah, yeah, I thought that was that was really unique. Um, just something I feel like it was also really interesting how it kind of unfolded the backstory, like not necessarily all at once, but it gave it to you piece by piece and not even like in order. And I feel like that that's especially we starting with the first movie when it wants to bring you up to speed, it can be difficult to do that without showing you everything like in order as it happened. But this like kind of doled it out like like I said, piece by piece and. And it all fit together, which is sort of hard to do. Yeah, it was it was really good storytelling. I thought the same thing. Instead of them front loading the first forty five minutes of the movie with origin story, they kind of just threw it, gave it to us, and like yeah. 
because at first, like when the movie first started and we get the the bus scene that we saw in the trailer where he's just yeah. where he's automatically like a kung fu master. I'm like, wait, what? But yeah, then, I know, like, I was, yeah. they tell the story. I'm like, oh, so he's always been a, a, basically an assassin. He's just running away from that life. Do you remember yeah. what I said to you, Logan, when we got to the bus scene? Uh, I was like, already? But then in my head, I was like, wait a minute. He hasn't done any fucking training yet. How are they going <laughs> to... How are they going to do anything? And then he fall. God, he, he may. He's, oh, how many times did I lean over and say, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> and then what did Freaking you awesome. think about Trevor. the addition of Trevor? I'm Trevor, Trevor Slattery. That was, <laughs> I love it. I it, like that was a little bit forced. And I feel like Iron Man 2 is a little bit one that not everybody knows as much. So that's that needed a Google and maybe a little like it could have done with a bit um more visual backstory instead of just that was all just True. exposition they could have put yeah. in like a scene of him actually being the mandarin on the right. tv you know yeah like a like yeah like a like quick a flashback. flashback or yeah. something yeah right uh, but they're i think they're at this point honestly like after endgame with all of the weird shit that they do i think they're just confident that the people watching will remember the small details like that right and also, how much did he really control? Like, how much did knowing the full backstory? It didn't. The story didn't re- like require every viewer to know every detail of Iron he Man Two. Freaking yeah. funny, <laughs> right? He was, he and, was and his little pet, whatever. Oh yeah, was, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. was like, excuse me, what the hell is that? And then, yeah. um, He's like, oh, you can see him. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So I one question I guess I had was more of just like a plot thing. So was that abomination that Wong yes. was fighting? Okay, I didn't remember it having like the gill things like that's, on the side. Yeah, of that's what I was thinking. Which is, is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little quick little uh, yeah. We haven't fact talked about on that. and there was an aim guy like one of those aim the blow up fiery dudes like from the Iron Man three also that was fighting oh, in that and there's so many little that. Easter eggs. Oh yeah. And what do we think of the freaking ending with Wong and oh shit? Yep, Wong ah, and uh, Bruce yeah. and Marvel. Yeah. Oh, Bree. I know. Bree. That was pretty cool. Logan made a. He kind of pointed something out that he said her hair is long. What does that mean? You know, what does that Thank mean? Thank God. <laughs> well, no, but like it could be. They could. It could be a small detail that we'll go touch back on later or something like that. Who knows? Multiverse yeah. shit. I, I kind of thought about that, Tanner, and I kind of just realized how dumb my comment was because, like, ah, shit. They, don't, they don't exactly <laughs> acknowledge how long after Endgame this took place. This is true. But I'm going to assume it jumps time because in the trailer for Eternals, one, somebody says, like, it's been five years since Thanos, like, did the thing. So I assume this took place a couple years, and that's plenty of time for Captain Marvel's hair to grow back. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> because at first, like when we saw the movie, I was like, "Oh, do you think this could be taking place like during, maybe Infinity right after?" War? But then I remembered that somebody in the movie made a comment about yeah. Thanos. Yeah, or, and we live I was in like, a oh, world. Okay. They said we live in a world that half the population could be wiped out at any moment. God, and that's also how you know this movie was so good. I remember everything from it. Everything it stuck with me. Yeah, just a really, really tight script. Yes. Yes. Oh, and also Bruce had his arm in a sling. So that's true. Another. So yes. it must have been like a year, maybe. maybe yeah, six maybe, months. Or, or at least pretty close to Endgame because he was in a sling at the end, Still, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. But is he always going to have to be? Because I feel like that's going to be permanent damage. Probably. <laughs> well, that's true. Fingers. I forgot. Yeah. I completely forgot that the sling was because he fucked up his arm with the snap. Yeah. Wait, and he the last time we saw him, he was still in Smart Hulk form, wasn't he? Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! That's a good. That's a good point because he, he said he he blended like the man or the brains and the beast. So why was yeah. he in human form? Oh, Maybe that's boy. blending. He can just switch between back and forth at will. I don't know. Probably now. I bet. I bet that's huh. what. The, that's what it'll. Or maybe he's just can't go back. Maybe it's done. Maybe because yeah, you gave know. Up. I have. Uh, yeah, I have maybe, some. Maybe Hulk got pissed and stopped. I have some insight on the abomination uh, sure. cage match. It says says here that the choice to include Wong and Abomination fighting each other 
um, was influenced on what's going on elsewhere in the MCU. Says yeah. the director. Um, says the he. Here's a quote from uh, the director here. How we arrive at ideas is so hard to trace back to where they began or began. Abomination was a result of 20 to 30. What if this would be cool if these two people were fighting? And huh. then we landed on a pairing that felt great, but it was also a pairing that made sense to what's going on in the MCU around the time of our movie. So there are definite links happening that you will pick up on if you're involved with everything else that's happening. Okay. Which we are. And did you see did you see when he opened up the thing? Where did they go? That's what I'm looking at now. Yeah. They think it's the raft. Oh, that makes sense. So why would they let him out of the raft to go fight? Just as a, hey, you, Wait. for good behavior, you're going to go to go do a Who? cage match situation? Under under the, under the control of Wong, I guess, yeah. Who is in the raft right now that could be the sixth villain in the Sinister Six? Maybe they took, he had to, I don't know, maybe they had to take all the inmates out because Vulture fucks everything up. Who knows? I have a feeling oh. that this movie and... Spider-Man take place at the same time. I think so too. Because also. where was Doctor Strange during this movie? Like That's... where Wong like was present at the end of the movie with Captain Marvel and Banner? Yeah, Why wasn't sense. Doctor Strange there? It makes yeah. sense because Far From Home was like almost media. No, yeah, Far From Home was almost pretty like a couple months after Endgame, and the new one takes place directly after Far From Home, like immediately. So, hmm. Okay. Shit. That's some good. That's some good timeline. God, I didn't think about this stuff. It says also people were curious about Abomination's looks with the scales and the fangs and the gills and stuff. It says it was a good time to refresh Abomination's look. We haven't seen him for quite a while, so I think people were excited to see how he's evolved over yeah. time. That makes oh. sense. He's highly irradiated. He can change in whatever way they need him to. And but he can bull, swim. Ball, it's like sure. Yeah, yeah. If he's been swimming, really it's exciting. like, all right. I need Gill's family. Hit me. <laughs> this is really exciting. I'm excited because yeah, I, I to was too. Like, because I was thinking the same thing. Like, where the hell did they go with Wong? Like after that fight, and like after the fight, it like it was like Wong and like Abomination. They were like fist bumped or whatever. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like uh, they were both on the take. It, it was like, like wrestling. That uh, <laughs> I was like, are they just? cool with each other was abomination <laughs> not a super villain at one point right, right. is all this kayfabe who knows That's it my says that boys out there like like i just said like from the director he said that things are going on in the mcu that are relevant to the time so maybe something's going down with hulk and abomination like yeah. around this time oh shit who knows we don't know I like we the don't. raft theory though. There could be so, there could be something bad going on that he had to take him out of the raft. Who knows? You know. And he just dragged him in. It was I just an interesting exchange there with Abomination. Yeah, meant to inspire discussions like these. I bet. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll find so guys, out exactly what it meant. Is there more to say about Shang Chi? I feel like we didn't do it enough justice, but I think we all just fucking loved it. It was incredible. Yeah. So where do we go from here? I think I was going to ask you guys. Where does Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings fall amongst your MCU rankings? Tanner, in what tier does this movie go for you? Infinity Stone. It's a masterpiece. I love it. I watch this over. I will watch this over and over and over when I get it. When it comes out on like Disney Plus and stuff, I'll watch it again and again and again. It was the fighting was awesome. Are you God? <laughs> Matt, <laughs> so what cool. do you think? I think I'm going to have to only go with Vibranium. Mm. Except, like, I think, like I said, the sort of closest comparison is Black Panther. And that movie did a lot more world building stuff. Like, there's going to be series for, like, that take place, like, in Wakanda. And I'm not saying that this movie did anything wrong by not sort of leaving that as a possibility. But I'm like, if there was to be one set in Talo, is that whatever the name of the village is? I'm definitely not as interested in that as I am in seeing, you know, a Wakanda based spinoff. Um, and yeah, I just, it's really good, but it just doesn't quite meet that top tier. But again, those are all still likely five out of five movies for the vibranium tier. So sure. what about sure. you, Logan? 
Yeah, um, I'm stuck somewhere between you two. Like, for right now, yeah. maybe it's because I'm on a high, but I'm throwing it in the Affinity Stones. But keeping a spot open for it in the Vibranium tier. But keeping a spot open for it in the Vibranium <laughs> only because I have... I have Black Widow in the Vibranium slot. Yeah. And I enjoyed this a lot more than Black Widow, but I didn't hate Black Widow at all. Like, I, yeah. I think we all enjoyed Black Widow. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm leaving it Infinity Stone now, but as time goes on, if I don't think of it as fondly as I do a few days later, then I'll move it down to Vibranium. Yeah. And, you know, I'll do the same. If Shang-Chi, like, turns out to be, like just that dude for this phase of it. And it's like, this is the one that started that. And then they just set up a lot of stuff really well. I'll definitely bump it up. Yeah, so. for sure. That's the best thing is that we can, uh, we can move these lists around as we go. <laughs> I was wondering this the other day, before we move on to what we've been binging, are we going to rank? Are we going to place? What if in our ranking? Uh or do, we, or do we only throw like animated shows in their own, I don't want to, I don't necessarily think we need our own ranking system for animated shows but like I don't know maybe I thinking at this point we list out the what like when it's just one season we can just list the what if episodes like just ranked against each other not necessarily like oh True. what if episode 3 that's better than you know all these like other movies cuz I think like it's just you know they're doing two different things whereas each what if episode is kind of setting out to accomplish the same goal. It's true. I like the idea of that by us. Maybe when the show's over, I think it's maybe 10 episodes, maybe doing a top 10. Oh, that'd be fun. I'd do that. How about that? How about that? Programming so it's first, right on the air. How about it? <laughs> so it's a first episode of the month. So that means we get to run through what we've been talking about and or, or what we've been binging sorry and your boy's got a lot i've done a lot of shit in the last and and also a lot of shows have ended that i've watched um in the past few weeks so your boy's got a lot so i'll go last tanner what have you been watching binging playing listening to what you've been what you've been doing the video games i've been playing the witcher 3 i really actually like it it's a great game I've been really? told a thousand times to play it, and I finally did, and it's good. It's it's gonna take my time up, but uh, I love <laughs> that. But what I'm binging that I'm the most excited about that I cannot wait for the movie to come out also is The Sopranos. Oh my god, what a show! Yeah, seriously, it's incredible. You've seen it, Matt? No, I'm watching it now. I think we good. just watched like season or episodes like seven or eight of uh, of season one. I got. To, I'm on a. Season five. Oh goodness! <laughs> oh well, yeah, God, I've the, gotten through uh, it pretty fast. The soccer coach was just found out to be having sex with the students. Yep. That's the oh, episode yeah. that we just watched. Yeah, it's not going to be good when they figure it out. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> but it's Whoops. such a cool show. Holy it's really shit. good. So good. Tony is. Oh, it's incredible, mm -hmm. and it keeps getting better. By the way, it, it does not get more boring. It gets more complicated and way even better. So, no, yeah. I, yeah, it's definitely a great show. Oh, yeah. This early in. And I cannot wait for that movie to come out now. So that's what I've been binging. I literally have been binging nothing but The Sopranos. That's it. <laughs> it's I can't, a long I can't. show, so I don't doubt that. It's a oh, lot yeah. of show. Yeah, I really can't watch. Oh, other than What If, but I dropped, like, I haven't watched a single episode of the new iCarly reboot thing. I was supposed to keep it. I bought Paramount Plus for that, and now I don't watch it at all. But, you know, Sopranos. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mr. Matt? Uh, yeah, so The Sopranos as well. Um, 30 Rock also found its way into oh, Netflix. So that's ooh. been that's been in the rotation. Yeah. Watching watching it through for the first time. Hadn't seen it, haven't seen it before. I was just about to ask. Wow, I'm I'm surprised. That seems very up your alley in terms yeah. of sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, no, it I'm I'm really liking it. It's very a lot of like quick jokes. Um and yeah, just a really great cast, but it's been lauded for all the years that it's been going on not really too much else been pretty pretty boring can't even think of like a, a movie or something besides my life that i've seen uh <laughs> recently 
Uh, so pretty boring. Just, yeah, basically I get home and then it's like, all right, we're watching Sopranos for 30 Rock tonight. And yeah, it's kind of taking over our life, man. Oh, the Sopranos. So get it, get after it, Logan. I, I can see you chomping at the bit there to just get the list off. Man, I've been, <laughs> well, I've stuck with a lot of shows. So yeah. let me just go down my list of things I've been doing and I'm, I'll talk about them if I need to. Um, Unlike Tanner giving up on it, I did um, kind of bust. Bust is not the right word. Uh, I did watch the iCarly that show, the iCarly reboot, um, in which I'd probably give it a two out of five. Honestly, yeah. first episode or two was cool to see the gang back together, but as the show went on, it literally just turned into my background. Oh, yeah. I'm doing the dishes. I'm doing laundry. I'm not paying attention to it at all. Um, so people that are listening or you two, you probably could skip it. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah that's what I already kind of did. Sadly. Yeah. I, I do not blame you there. Um, so we've got then Dave season two, um, the show Same of here. little Dickie kind of fell off a little bit it's not as good as season one but it oh. did secure a three out of five for me uh see for season two so that's you know it, it was fine but um not uh jumping up and down about the season two like i was jumping up and down about season one. Oh, season one was awesome um Turner and Hooch. Oh yeah. Oh the the Josh Peck joint. That one's yeah. I forgot about that one. Have watched a couple episodes with Catherine. It's not horrible. Mm -mm. We kind of fell back though. We've we've haven't watched an episode since like episode two. We we need to catch up on it. But Same. I'm not chomping at the bit too. But I do see it in my queue, and I'm like, eh, I, I've heard good things or semi good things. So I'm. I'm kind of interested in getting back into it, but we'll see how that goes on. But maybe by the next time we do this segment, I won't. Uh, I won't be watching it. We'll see. Um, Monsters at Work, the uh, the Monsters Inc. animated Disney Plus show that that kind of came back. Eh, eh. kind of like iCarly. It got a three out of five for season one. It kind of, you know, it held my attention. It kind of turned into a background show, but it was cool to see the Monsters Inc. universe again. I love Monsters Inc. It's one of my favorite Pixar movies. Same. The Monsters Cinematic Universe, the real <laughs> MCU, for real. Um, so you know that that was fine. Uh, Ted Lasso season two. I'm very much so losing interest on it, to be honest. Really, yeah, Twitter really seems to be season, uh... really enjoyed season one. This season, I'm just not. I'm just not hooked. I think it would have been a really good one and done, but you know, we're 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 still we're still chugging along. I'm still watching them. Um, Outer Banks season two was very good. Um, I gave that a four out of five. Very excited for season three. Um, I'm just rattling these off at this point. Uh, Truth be told, another Apple TV Plus series. Uh, that me and Catherine started kind of murder mystery. It's good, but we've been falling behind on that. Of course, what if um, I finished Doom, the video game? Oh, uh, yeah. Enjoyed myself, gave that a four out of five. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I recently re downloaded Red Dead Redemption 2 and am chugging through that storyline right now it's a such lot of a good, fun such a good game so um that's what my video game time has been this is uh me to red dead redemption 2 you're all right boy <laughs> <laughs> that's what i say to that video game <laughs> <laughs> i watched this morning a documentary on apple tv plus all about uh 9-11 oh which uh, was pretty heavy to watch on my leg <laughs> day, day off. Yeah. Um, but it was really cool. I had interviews with Dick Cheney and George W. Bush. And basically it was like a, instead of a, instead of a uh, documentary about like nine 11 itself, it was more like a documentary about like from the moment George W. Woke up that morning to like the minute he went to bed, kind of, 
kind of everything that was going on in his world less you know less so what was going on like in the world kind of just like yeah what happens when a terrorist attack occurs on u.s soil what happens to the president what happens to his family all kinds of stuff like that so that was pretty cool i gave that a five out of five it was really good it was really really good really good to get the uh uh whatever president he was 42 43 i forget but i think 42 yeah because trump was 44 yeah 42 okay so yeah so it was cool to get 42's perspective there on all the events but and you, you can't not just like watching george w just make little like stupid <laughs> jokes to himself like he'd be like i got up that morning and went for a run who knew i could run <laughs> and it was like it, it was just kind of cute because okay, he's just old at this point and, yeah. it, and he just makes old man jokes um i did watch he's all that on netflix starring oh, uh the addison Addison Ray Ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you think um it wasn't horrid there was actually scenes that i enjoyed but i mean no one's writing home about this i mean it, it was it was cool to watch never gonna watch it again wouldn't recommend it but also wouldn't <laughs> like tell someone to not watch it okay so addison ray addison she did ray her fans. thing uh <laughs> she didn't shake that thing though i was kind of disappointed about that but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But God, I the thing the I wanted break down the door. The yeah. thing I wanted to tell you guys about. <gasps> I binged this show today. It was fantastic from start to finish. You have to watch Clickbait on Netflix. Clickbait. What's clickbait? clickbait, man? It is a limited series. There's eight episodes. They're each about 45 minutes long on Netflix. It is an easy watch. It is very good from huh. start to finish. It's going to easily go down in my top five TV series of really? the year. Wow. Uh, Damn, I very okay. much so enjoyed it, man. It's about a guy who gets kidnapped and a video gets posted of him online and it says like he's holding up signs like I abuse women I I've killed somebody and it's getting live streamed and it says like, if this video hits 5 million views, I get executed Holy and, shit. Uh, and he does, but the, but that all happens episode one and the rest of the show deals with the fallout of the media of his family. Um, and you, you find out, who the murderer is eventually you find out the unravelings of the story it's very very good it's told in a really unique way i think the first episode is called the father which deals with him the second episode is called the wife and it shows her perspective and then it goes through like reporters and judges and police officers and his kids and co-workers and it all ravels up to show who the murderer was who was the mastermind holy shit and man it's very good you gotta watch it it's a fun fun binge i how really, many episodes this is this is binge boys like spirit <laughs> here man like this is it's been a minute since okay. i've sat down and watched episodes of a show back to back like this like uh, kudos to Catherine for getting me into it because at first i was like this is stupid i don't i don't care about this but <laughs> Man, after episode uh, one, it's like, okay, you've got my attention. I'm interested. You got <laughs> you, me interested. You, you should watch it, and maybe next time, if when when we hit the seggy, uh, <laughs> you you mention it because it's it's a good watch, guys. I, I wouldn't steer you wrong here. Yeah. How, long, like how long? Coming the... from the guy who watched, he's all that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very enjoyable. Y'all would really like it, I think. I think well, hell would. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I definitely will watch that. You got me. Uh, I like that type of stuff. It's really sounds creepy as hell. I'll the be acting, honest. The acting is so good throughout. I mean, they're is all it? no names oh. except for the lead guy, Matt. You might know him. Tanner, I don't expect you to know him, but um, <laughs> let me show you. His name is Adrian Grenier. Name sounds familiar. His face, you would definitely know. He's uh, known for Entourage. Okay. Uh, the Devil Wears Prada. 
I've seen this dude. He's uh, he, he's got a recognizable face. You've seen him somewhere before. Oh, he is Vinny Chase, dude. I crushed that. Yeah, man. He's uh, he's very very good. It's it's a really good show, guys. I I I, I highly recommend it. Oh, okay. cool. I'm definitely gonna watch it. I'm interested. I'm looking at it right now. I'm really excited to, to hear what you guys think about it. It's it's very good. Do oh, not thanks. read the episode descriptions though, because they hey, do yeah. give things away. So sure. just just be careful there. But don't do that in what Sopranos either. Doing. Yeah, I, Don't I do haven't it. been. Good. Um, do we want to um, do a quick Adrian Grenier's net worth? Oh, shit. Hmm. Tanner, I don't expect you to know. Yeah, I, say, uh, I, I mean, I'm question. looking at his uh, I'm looking at his filmography, and it's all this whatever it's called. Have cinema. you ever seen Entourage, Matt? It's just like an episode or two here or there, not like all throughout. Shouts to J.R. Hickey. Yeah, shouts to J.R. Hickey, friend of the programming. I I've, yeah. I've never seen it really either, but I'm gonna go. Entourage was a success, man. Um, it's got a two out of five. Entourage. And a 6.6 and a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was, wait, that might be the movie. Yeah. They made a movie movie, reunion about it a few years ago. It was a TV series. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess 100 mil. Is that too much? Uh, Can we go (laughs) 20 mil? Let's go. Let's go 25 mil. Oh, really? 900K. 12 million. So he's still he's still a million. He's still an eight digits club, but oh, or yeah. ten digits club, I guess. That's a tough scene for him. I mean, I would think that H those HBO residuals would be would be hidden, but I guess not not like you would think. I need to add, um, I think Sopranos is gonna go on my list very soon. Yeah. Because uh, we were actually talking the other day, me and Catherine, like, what's a what's a show we could start? And I said, everybody I know is binging The Sopranos, so maybe maybe that's next. That is next. Okay, I'll start that's, it. Because that movie's going to come out, too, and that's going to yeah. be awesome. I don't think we need to finish the whole story to watch that movie. It's more of a it, standalone. I think it's a prequel. It's pretty it is. Cool. It is. I but you, it all, you won't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like, to tie in. You'll know... Matt, as you keep watching, you'll know who these new guys' names are. Once you watch the trailer again, like yeah. watch it after a few seasons, you'll be like, "Oh shit, that's <laughs> that guy." Yeah, yeah. Funny enough, uh, Carm shows up in Thirty Rock, and Ra- I, I didn't clock it at all. But Rachel and was. she's in that new uh, what do you call it? New uh, uh, impeachment thing. Oh, when does that start? That comes out this week, I think. Oh wow, I think on you're FX. Right. Yeah, is there? Are they going to release it weekly on Hulu like normal? Uh, it'll probably be a weekly thing. Yeah. Cool. Oh, the true crime. Thing? Yeah. 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 She's, on, she, she's, uh, she's on that one. Okay. Okay. Car- Carmela Soprano. <laughs> so cool. Fuck. Well, <laughs> I was actually going to run this guy by you guys in terms of like the major release for this week. So there's not a major release for this week, but there is a movie that just came out on Netflix. Um, it's all that. Starring he's Michael all that. Keaton. <laughs> stars michael keaton uh and it's called worth and it's okay a, and it's about the team that is responsible for i guess like uh, i'm gonna butcher it if i don't if i don't read it correctly but it's basically right. it's about 9-11 oh, okay he'll be top oh okay let me look at basically, it basically where he plays a guy uh, it's a biographical film um. Uh, oh, so he's a lawyer that is trying to help victims of 9-11 collect the money that they are owed by the government. Oh, oh gotcha. this looks good as shit. Yeah, let's watch it. Sure. So, Stanley Tucci, Amy Ryan are also in it. Apparently, yeah. it's pretty decent. So, um, Wow. Okay, this looks good. So we could watch that. I mean, it's on Netflix. It'd be easy to watch. We don't have to go to the theater to watch it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Sounds worth. Plus, who doesn't love? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but Tanner, if we get the chance, I would like to see Candyman. Oh, me too. Um, so we could maybe sprinkle that in if as well. Um, but I also heard from friend of the program Megan, run through host, that we could probably skip it if we wanted to. Damn. So Let's I don't know about it. We'll see. I mean, I'm still, I'm still down to watch it. I like. Yeah, I still shit. wanted to see it, but it'd be fun I to go know. and get get scared in the theater. Yeah, I mean, 
It'd be a it'd be a fun scary movie, but we'll see. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. But other than that, we could watch Worth and uh, talk about What If episode four oh. or five. five. Sorry. Yeah. Five. Yeah. <laughs> I, we could talk about it again. I don't know what <laughs> what would change, Marvy. True shit. That was good shit. Well, Shang Chi, Shang Chi. Sorry. Yeah. Shang Chi. What if episode four and certified lover boy? That was Binge Boys 229. Certified Binge Boys boy 230 lover. is going to be uh, the run through for seven. So be on the lookout for that on Thursday. But other than that, boys and girls, that was uh, that was the episode. Boom. That's it. That was a fun one. That was fun. Big stuff. Get Shout excited the about uh, get excited about all this good stuff hell yeah so oh. we're just closer and closer to uh spider-man do you think spider-man will be better than shang chi oh yeah well i hope it i hope so no i'm talking in terms of we're gonna have to be real careful with reviewing that because we're gonna be excited this is yeah. true yeah we actually we got to look at it from a reviewer standpoint that's gonna be hard for me <laughs> Also, following up on our theories, Matt sent us a article confirming that that was not Matt Murdoch. Yeah, in, I, saw uh, yeah that I, don't, sucks. I don't know if it was an article. Article is a bit strong. It's really a tabloid, I think. <laughs> an internet tabloid. There's I also saw in. something on I saw something on Twitter this morning of that trailer being shown in an IMAX theater and it stretched the trailer and you can see the guy's face and it's not okay. Matt Murdoch. Yeah, no, that's so what that I saw be, too. It might be the same source then, basically. Sad. Well, some I random also prosecutor. saw I saw one thing today and it was multiple sources saying that there's going to be a second trailer for Spider-Man <laughs> yeah, that yeah, comes yeah, out yeah. that comes out at the end of October and the money shot of the trailer will ha- <laughs> be all that. three Spider-Men back oh. to back with the Sinister Six around them. Oh, Let's go. We'll see. I we'll believe see. it. Hey, I saw that too. I can't wait. Logan's we'll rumor mill was alive and well. <laughs> Logan Spider Man rumors are back and running, baby. <laughs> Let's but go. Until then, guys, uh, follow us on Instagram, leave that rating and review, and tell a friend. We will Do see it. you guys next time. See Bye. Ya.